Today, Ashley Miller and I will be talking about bringing sea level rise to life using GIS and Python. Um, as Keith said, Ashley joined co-ops in 2010, and now she's the GIS team lead. And I joined Laker in support of NOAA in June 2020 and recently finished my master's and graduated this past October. So setting up for success, we are housed in NOAA's Center for Operational Oceanographic Products and Services, which is the nation's source for coastal inundation and sea level trend data. Using Python, we bring these trends to life um, using visual, temporal, and spatial comparisons of sea level trends data for all 146 co-ops tide stations. Um, and these comparisons change through time. And we do this by enhancing the attributes of an existing co-op sea level trend layer. Additionally, these animations are on the path to be published um, in NOAA's Climate Resilient Toolkit, toolkit uh, via climate.gov. And this GIF integrated layer was created in ArcGIS Pro and published to the NOAA Geo platform using ArcGIS Online. So challenges in development. Um, the first challenge was how are we going to make animations for all 146 stations? We accomplished this by automating the script, as you can see the screenshot here. And then our second uh, challenge was determining how to visually represent large amounts of data. And we accomplished this by converting point data and using scaled symbology to represent regional trends over time. And then we add the animations to the water level station attributes. So interpretation. Historically, these data have been represented as static graphics for the period of calculation. And creating these GIFs allow for historical data to be plotted over a color gradient with the black line designating each year's progression. Animations like these facilitate easier interpretation of sea level trends in an aesthetically pleasing way by not only showing the progression year to year, but showing the variability of each month in a given year. Furthermore, animations accomplish the visual, temporal, and spatial representations by one, illustrating the evolution of the data that the value of the arrow on the map is derived from, two, the progression of the GIF shows how the data varies through time, and three, uh, integrating the GIF into the GIS layer allows for regional comparisons of trends. And this gives this, um, this product the capability to capture the dynamic variability in sea level trends that occur across the country, which can be seen in both Alaska and um, Louisiana here. As you see in Alaska, the sea level trend is decreasing and in the Gulf, it is increasing. So now that Julia has gone through the background development and interpretation, I'm going to go over the advantage that GIS gave us to, oops, to complete our project. Um, currently, our sea level trends are hosted on a server that is shared throughout NOAA, and that specific layer only has a few attributes, and updating it through NOAA has proven to be very time-consuming on the order of many months. Um, if we wanted to use that layer right now, though, we could bring it into ArcGIS, um, ArcGIS Online manually and make a map, but it, obviously it doesn't automatically have the right uh, symbology, and it was missing some of the updated information, including the simulations that we just created. By using our Pro, as you can see, I have a screenshot here on the bottom, and recreating the same layer with the updated and added attributes, we can symbolize the data the way we wanted to match the colors that co-ops traditionally has used. And then we are able to share it as a map layer to ArcGIS Online, which is a new capability for NOAA because we previously were not able to do that and that has opened up a world of possibilities for us. So I'm gonna really quickly go over to the map itself. And this is what it looks like when you open that hosted layer on ArcGIS Online and you can see all the arrows showing the sea level trends here. And hosting this information as a feature layer through AGOL adds additional product interactivity, as many of us know. Anyone in the community can access this data and embed features for their own use, which was a real push for why we went this route. 
once it was hosted, we could easily customize the pop-ups to further enhance the layer. So if I zoom in here and click on one of these stations, let's go with this one, Port San Luis. Um, we were able to customize the pop-ups and that further enhances the layer. And as you can see, this is where we pulled in the GIFs to show the sea level trends change through time. And it's really easy to add an attribute into these pop-ups through ArcGIS Online and you can add a link to an image or a GIF and if you click on it, you can bring it up in a new window so it's much larger and easier to see as well. Having this capability to pull these into the, um, to configure these attributes was crucial for our project. And this entire GIS methodology allowed um, better data manipulation, data manipulation and interpretation furthering the reach of our data. This interactive tool will help coastal communities facing these imminent impacts better understand their flood risks and consequently plan for the future. It also allows us to better collaborate with other parts of NOAA, as Julia mentioned. Just this past week, we already have made steps to improve our methodology by creating a Python script to auto update the shape file that is made from a CSV that's hosted on our website. Within the ARC Pro Python <clears throat> environment, the tool pulls from that CV CSV and creates the shape file and then makes a hosted feature service and automatically shares it with the NOAA Geo platform on ArcGIS Online. <clears throat> We're really excited to further use Python to complete that tool and put it into practice and add in the symbology so it's automatically correct. With all of that being said, the Enhanced Sea Level Trend Animation Map is planned to be available through NOAA's Office of Oceanic and Atmospheric Research, as Julia mentioned, on climate.gov. And integrating the dynamic visualizations will add to NOAA's Climate Resilience Toolkit, which is a valuable resource for businesses and communities adapting to the changes of climate change. We're also really looking forward to implementing the GIS methodology used here to enhance additional co-ops products like water levels and water temperature through maps. We're already looking to use potentially color bars for showing water temperatures change through time at our stations. And then not only will this process or workflow enhance our GIS products, but we can use this for other scenarios such as near real time events like the tsunami shown here, which was actually just a few weeks ago. Uh, and this is using Julia's code to pull in that data. And it's just a really nice way to see everything in one place. We also plan on submitting our map to the Living Atlas, which is a wonderful <clears throat> authoritative data source that is becoming more robust and useful to the public every day. I know that we've all heard of it, but if you haven't used it, I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, and last, I know once again, questions are for later, but we wanna thank you all for your time and listening to us speak today. And if you have any questions at the end of this, we are more than happy to answer them. And our emails are at the bottom left corner if you are interested in talking with us more. So thank you again.